G'day guys, how you doing? And today I want to talk about the uh, pros and cons of uh, picking a camera for deep space astrophotography. Uh, in one hand I've got the uh, mirrorless or DSLR. Um, in this case it's the mirrorless. And in the other hand here I've got a one-shot color. Now these are the two I'll be comparing. I'm not going to be talking about monochrome um, cool cameras, okay, because that's a totally different ball game altogether. So this is more for if you're beginning to get into deep space astrophotography or you're um, at an intermediate type level, okay, and you don't really want to mess around too much with the processing of monochrome, okay. So let's get started, shall we? And I think we're going to pick the mirrorless, uh, my little uh, my Z7 here. And we'll talk about the pros and cons of the mirrorless or DSLR camera. Okay, um, one of the pros is that you don't need any power cables, all right, to run it. All right, so that's a nice little advantage if you're out there in the field. It's a, bit, a little bit less you have to um, bring with you to power a camera. Okay. Uh, also, you don't need any additional software um, to view the images because all the software's in the camera and we can view it all on our live view screen at the back here. So again, it's less stuff we need to carry with us out in the field wherever it um, is we're going to. Okay, uh, It's a little bit more easy to um, expand on equipment and by that I mean um, different size uh, lenses. Uh, for different occasions, um, telescopes as well, you just need the right T-ring for it. So it's a lot easier to adapt to a, um, a larger range of um, imaging uh, equipment that you uh, wish to use. All right. And uh, all your images are also saved on a uh, memory card, so that's another um, pro as well. So there are a lot of things going for a um, a mirrorless or DSLR camera for uh, deep space astrophotography, especially if you're traveling to um, locations to, to shoot, there's really a lot less stuff you need to carry with you um, to uh, operate a camera. Um, the other thing too I want to uh, mention is that uh, sensor size, um, so it's a lot cheaper as well to go down this path for a larger sensor um, than it would be for a, a cool camera um, and the fact that they're more readily available um, used as well which makes things a bit cheaper all right so there's some of the uh, the pros um, in shooting with a, uh, a DSLR or mirrorless camera my opinions um, but some of the cons are uh, do, do kind of weigh up a fair bit too and that is um, you're going to get higher noise um, in your deep space images as well. Um, the other thing is unless you've uh, got an intervalometer or you own something like a, a D810A or D, D8, uh, sorry, D780 um, where you can shoot longer exposures uh, in camera then you're going to be fairly limited to a uh, 30 second um, exposure. So an intervalometer um, is just another piece of equipment that you'll probably have to buy to shoot longer exposures. Uh, the other thing too is um, during cold nights your batteries can drain fairly quickly so you may need to find, you may find yourself throughout a night um, swapping batteries over so it's either another outlay of cost whether you buy yourself a battery pack and have two batteries um, powering your camera throughout a session which should get you through the, the whole night so that way you can set it up and hopefully go get some sleep and then wake up in the morning and uh, and check out all your cool images. Um, the other thing is also uh, not all cameras are, are weather sealed as well so um, during some nights you can get very very dewy and that could cause an issue for um, some cameras if they're not very well sealed and, uh, and the last thing you want is a uh, camera um, playing up on you. Um, DSLRs and mirrorless cameras also don't pick up uh, hydrogen alpha very well um, due to the um, 
IR and UV uh, cutoff filters um, in front of the sensor. So that's a little bit of a bummer as well because sometimes we like to capture those real hydrogen alpha rich nebulas and um, you're going to struggle a little bit with a DSLR mirrorless. Unless you want to get it um, Astro modified, then again that's another cost to you as well as being that if you've bought a brand new camera for astrophotography and you're going to end up or you'd want to end up getting it uh, modified be aware that you're going to um, void your warranty as well okay so I always uh, tell people that it's best to um, get yourself a second-hand camera all right, just in case okay um, and lastly dark frames now it's going to take a, a lot more of your imaging session throughout the night producing dark frames. And the reason for that is you, you've got to pretty much produce dark frames throughout that session um, due to ambient temperatures and camera temperatures. You want to try and keep it as controlled as possible between a dark frame and a light frame in, in temperature uh, to get the best results. So that's going to cut into your uh, imaging time obviously by about half I mean if you're using long exposure noise reduction in camera uh, and you're going to shoot three minute exposures or five minute exposures then you're going to be waiting another three or five minutes after that for your uh, dark frame okay so um, just be aware that uh, those things can really add up and you're not going to get as much data as you may possibly want it might take two nights um, to get the same amount of data as, uh, as maybe a one-shot uh, color-cooled camera. All right, so there's some of my uh, pros and my cons to um, shooting with a, a DSLR or mirrorless camera for astrophotography. And if you're a beginner, I really do think this is the best way to go. Okay, it's just so much more simple. You have more enjoyment and more fun out of the hobby um, rather than taking heaps of equipment maybe out um, to a dark sky location and setting up and then shooting. Right, I'm just talking from personal experience there uh, because I used to shoot monochrome um, cameras with monochrome cameras, filter wheels and everything else like that and it took away a little bit of that fun. So I went back to a DSLR which is the Nikon D810A um, I had there and, and that just sparked it all back out for me and it was just I just enjoy doing it um, you know if I've got to take all this equipment with me to power it, it it can be a bit of a pain sometimes but there are the pros and cons of a DSLR and mirrorless so what we're going to do is we're going to um, talk about some of the pros and cons of a cooled one-shot color uh, camera like my ZWO ASI 294 alright so the pros to these are that um, they can pick up hydrogen alpha um, really easily I mean they're designed for it so they don't really have a, um, a filter uh, in front of the sensor cutting off those wavelengths all right so that's generally why we end up adding a filter um, in the imaging train there like a uh, you know UV IR cut filter or a um, some sort of you know, contrast or light pollution filter or something like that um, so they're fantastic for that the other thing is that uh, dark frames can be taken dur during the day so unlike you can't your um, mirrorless or DSLR your um, cooled camera you can shoot throughout the night all your lights throughout the night and then during the day you can set it up and um, build up your dark and uh, bias libraries uh, during the day so you're not wasting any time you're being in as efficient you can as possible the other big advantage of this um, is the cooling all right so uh, I believe this camera here can go to about minus 20 degrees or minus 30 degrees below ambient I usually set it at about minus 10 degrees and I'm pretty happy with that I haven't really felt like going any more than that um, and what that does obviously is going to cool your sensor and your images are going to be uh, nowhere near as noisy as they would this and it's a uh, it's quite a big um, big difference um, and the other thing too is that you don't need any batteries to uh, 
to power these cameras. Um, it's a continuous power throughout the whole night. So you can just set up, shoot, and uh, not have to worry about replacing any batteries for this. However, there are a lot of cons with a, uh, a one-shot cool camera. And that is the connectors. All right, so you need to have this camera connected to a cam uh, to a, uh, a laptop, um, iPad if you're using like the ASI Air type setup, which I do, to control the camera, be able to view your images, be able to um, help with the focusing and all that sort of stuff. So focusing and everything else on a DSI mirror is so much more easier because you've got your live view screen right here on the back. A uh, cooled um, a colored camera like this, and you've got to have uh, extra equipment. Um, and that's going to be cost as well because if you don't have a laptop to take out in the field with you or an iPad, you know, the ASI, it's just going to be more costs on top of um, something like this here. Okay. Uh, there's no internal um, memory storage in these cameras. So again, you've got to use your laptop or um, an ASI Air with the uh, memory in the ASI Air itself to store um, all your images to then process a bit later. All right, so again, it makes these a little bit more easier. Um, the other thing too is the, uh, the sensor sizes um, on these sort of cameras here, they're more expensive. Uh, so if you were to get a full frame, one of these guys, um, called uh, one shot color camera you could be looking at depending on exchange rates and, and all that at that time um, you know six thousand dollars plus um, whereas you can pick up a used um, full frame DSLR like a D610 or something like that for around about eight hundred dollars um, Australian so there's a big plus um, again with the uh, the DSLR mirrorless over the one shot color cool cameras. But if you want to get that field of view, they can be attached to a lens, um, so you can sort of compensate a little bit for that sensor size. All right, um, and yeah, that's that's all I can really say about the cons of a uh, a one shot um, color cool camera. Um, they're, uh, they're probably the, the next step to go from one of these. So if you are just starting out, my advice would be master your images with one of these. And then when you feel like you're getting to that point where you're processing those images and you're trying to pull out all that real faint data and all of a sudden you find yourself pulling out more noise and data, um, it may be uh, about time to switch to a one-shot color cool camera. Um, if you're quite happy with um, taking more equipment out onto a, onto a dark sky site um, and you've got a little bit of extra cash you wish to spend, then maybe one of these guys um, might be for you. There are other things like um, the bayering of an image and everything else like that through the processing side of things you've got to do with um, one of these cameras too. So there's a little bit more processing um, involved um, with the images with the one-shot color than there is from your um, DSLR or mirrorless. So I hope that wasn't too much for these guys and I hope it gave you a little bit of a, an idea of... Um, which direction you may want to uh, head down yourself if you're deciding to pick between a cooled one-shot color um, camera or, a, or your DSLR or mirrorless. Again, if you've already got one of these, just go ahead and use it and challenge yourself. Challenge yourself to create the best deep space images you can. And my advice on that would be shooting lots of data. All right, you'll probably be shooting maybe twice as much as what you would for one of these, but you're going to get fantastic results still. All right, so uh, yeah, I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, please don't be afraid to ask. If you've enjoyed it, give it the old thumbs up. 
And uh, if you haven't um, subscribed to this channel yet, please do. All right, guys, so that's it for me now. And uh, until next time, take it easy. See ya.